It's the beginning, not the closure. The energy is so powerful. Everything I instinctively felt and every single person knows, to bring the collective consciousness together, it's not either or, it's and. We're trained to think that, that everything stops then, but life doesn't stop then, life keeps Doctor going. Doctor becomes God. They have all the information, I am not a the financial and political interests that they're on. Modalities have insight into what, something what it is to be human. When you are certain, you are unified. There's no greater suffering than no a hope. A true healer is somebody who's got an open mind to all possibilities. These ancient traditions are healing traditions. And we are not in respect of that. You know, we're not only machines. Artistry, you know, the hand, the touch, the feel, healing. You know, touching somebody is very old. We need to touch people. People need to be cared for as a whole. We're one person. That's what people want, connection. And I, I think we've lost it. So when you inclusively put everybody together, we are gonna make a difference. You know, all we care about is each other. It's so simple. It's human, human dignity. I really have faith. When you see a problem, there is a solution. I think that's why there are problems. <laughs> it's, it's sort of simple. I think this, this truth here that has to be spoken, which is that we learn how to detach as physicians. We're trained to disconnect, and the secret of healing is falling in love with the patient, is allowing yourself to enter into that sacred relationship. You know, people come to me after they've seen 80 physicians sometimes, and, and all they want is for somebody to listen to them, to validate them, to hear their story. And, and we're stories, not symptoms. Part of the problem with physician practice, though, is they're not mentored to value fundamental lifestyle, which is the core of health. If you, unless you're taught to value it within yourself and to value it as relevant to patients, you're not going to practice it. My passion is the heart, and I spend most of my time working on people's hearts, literally, uh, but not as much as I desire to figuratively. And the heart, which is our most poetic of all organs, you know, it's, we have bleeding hearts and cold hearts and stone hearts. Uh, but it is the aspect of the patient I think we deal with least effectively. And I'm coming to the realization that what we have to do is create a smart patient movement. They're the ones that are gonna drive this change. And for it to happen effectively, we have to empower them. We need to give them the toolkits they need. The training of doctors I think is critical in the system. But I also think it's critical to empower patients to remember they have choice. You know, the moment you focus on you're out of control, you feel it. You know, the moment you focus on fear is not an option, your, your body and your emotion and the meaning changes and your actions are going to change. I, I just want to touch on this idea of, of healing and it reminds me of a, of, of a thing I say to my children all the time. I'll say, a lady had a baby in a tree. It's based on the fact they had this flooding in Mozambique. And, and this woman who was pregnant climbed a tree and spent four days on the top of the tree and then had her baby on the top of the tree. That to me is a symbol of, as a patient, you have an obligation too to climb that tree. The most important thing in all of this really isn't doctors, nurses. It's really yourself. You find within yourself to have more vision and power. It's all within your choice. Now, I spent the next few weeks in traction in the children's ward in the hospital. Then one day, one of the doctors came to see me, and, and he told me that I wouldn't uh, be able to walk again. I was sure he had no idea what he was saying, and of course I was going to walk, and I just had to concentrate, just to, just keep trying to make contact with my feet, just convince them, will them to move. One of the ways I embraced the chaos of my particular illness was really to define a style for how I was gonna be sick. And a lot of the metaphors are, like, you're gonna fight your illness. But I'm a lover, not a fighter. I mean, I just wanted, you know, my unhappy cells to take, you know, the happy cells out for a pint and talk it over, you know? <laughs> I didn't want all these war-like metaphors. And I communicated that to my doctors and I've been so blessed for this journey. It's that total disbelief that someone has just said those words to you, that you have cancer. It's gotta change something in one's 
cells, you know? It is such a profound thing to be told. The idea that a doctor can say some words to me that can so profoundly shock me was sort of a setup for what I was about to go through because, you know, the doctor becomes God because they have all the information, I have none of it. I'm in grave danger and they can fix it, theoretically. Well, I think everybody in a hospital situation or in a situation of illness, even if they're not in a hospital, needs someone to help them navigate the system. I think having a, a navigator, a guide, um, whatever one wants to call it, to help people through just sorting out the information, sorting out the system, sorting out the red tape, sorting out how do I put a team together, because hospitals aren't all there yet. It's the patients who are doing the integrating. We are part of a post-colonial mentality in our, not, or sometimes I say not quite post-colonial, <laughs> still a little bit colonial in attitude, and we think we're the high civilization of the universe. We have machinery, so that proves that we are more, and we can destroy more than anybody ever could, so that proves that we are superior, which is incorrect. We, we have very powerful things that have powerful effects, but often side effects, and we have like 50% hospital beds are caused by misdiagnosis mis, uh, and misapplication of medicine, and, uh, and our health system is in a bit of a shambles at this point, although there are wonderful things that they do do, and it's not uh, to throw the whole baby out with the bathwater, but there's a, really a revolution that is required. So some years ago, I found myself in Tibet, living there for many months and working with a Tibetan doctor called an Amchi. And he said to me, look at modern medicine. How old is it? 80 years, 60 years? It's a young medicine. Our medicine, we are thousands of years doing what we are doing. A healer is there for the process of healing and is not wedded to his or her particular methodology. The true healer is somebody who's got an open mind to all possibilities because he or she is there whether as a researcher or a clinician, in the service of the people he or she is working with. If you can reach a level of trust in whatever path you've taken that is going to lead you to, to a light, to openness, to expansion, to the breaking down of all boundaries, that will activate with trust. Not just belief, but really a giving trust and a confidence that comes along with that, that you're really onto something that works. You're back home in the field of all possibilities, where everything is connected to everything else, where you're totally comfortable with uncertainty because you want to live in the unknown. The known is the past, it's dead, it's gone. The unknown is where the action is. So you want to live in the unknown, where there's spontaneity, where there's creativity, and where you realize that you can co-create with God. I think Western medicine is changing, and I think Western medicine needs to change. The thing that we all want to avoid is this kind of schism that's coming and a debate and conflict that's happening between the alternative and uh, conventional medicine. I think there's a real place for integration between Western medicine and yoga. Western medicine has given us so much in terms of, of our ability to combat disease and our ability to uh, take care of uh, traumatic injury and all kinds of things. But it certainly doesn't have all the answers. These shifts can happen. I think it's the 11th hour, but it's not 11.50 yet. It's time. We can do this, but I think we need to really support each other in doing it now. You're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. Both have to exist, the problem and the solution, simultaneously. But some people will carry the solution and some people will carry the problem. I choose to carry the solution. Every one of us, it touches every one of us. Conscious, be involved, and just show your love. Love cures all.